last 20 years we've been building lots of tools, we've been putting down uh, infrastructure, and it's all been pretty disjointed. So the Facebook's over there doing its Facebook thing, and you know YouTube's over here doing its YouTube thing, and the payment gateway software's over here doing that. Um, and there's all these different pieces of technology, and they don't really speak to each other, and they don't really connect up really well. But what's happening is they're starting to really connect up nicely and forming uh, quite large automation loops. So a lot of stuff is being automated, and a lot of entry-level jobs get automated away. Um, and there's this big fallacy that technology creates jobs, but in many ways it doesn't. In many ways it decimates jobs. Um, at its peak, at, it, uh, at its absolute peak, Blockbuster had 85,000 employees about 10 years ago. Um, I think it was 2000 and 2008, 2007, it had 85,000 employees, and it did six billion of revenue. And then by 2016, Netflix had four and a half thousand employees doing nine billion of revenue. Right, so they'd kind of gotten rid of 80,000 people plus all the bricks and mortar and all the leases and all the supply chain and all of that stuff went and they increased from 6 billion to 9 billion with just 4,500 people. If you have a look at the trend here, it's just across the board. Walmart, 2.2 million people. Amazon, 600,000 people. Half the people at Amazon work at Whole Foods through the acquisition. There were 300,000 people at Whole Foods. Vodafone, 104,000 employees. WhatsApp only has 200 employees. I'm pretty sure Vodafone has 200 analysts trying to figure out what WhatsApp does. Um, <laughs> News Corporation has 50,000 employees. Facebook's got 35,000. So Facebook is the new news, and it, it's the new publisher, and it's the new place for advertisers to go and advertise. So it's very much in competition with News Corp. And you think, OK, 35,000, 50,000, that's pretty cool. That's on par. But what's News Corp's valuation? What's its market cap? Who knows News Corp's market cap? It's about 9 billion US. Anyone know what Facebook's market cap is? About 550 billion US, right? So Facebook typically fluctuates by News Corp every day or every, every few days. It's kind of doing a News Corp up and a News Corp down. You know, that's just the noise for Facebook. Um, Hilton Hotels, 165. Uh, Airbnb, 4,000, right? So Sky. 31,000 employees, Netflix much bigger business than Sky, and it's only got 5,500 employees. So technology disrupts things in a really big way. It also causes globalization. In 2002, only 26% of the world's population had fast internet. As we go into the 2020s, it's 66% of the world's population with fast internet, and internet's getting faster. So 5G technology is so fast that you will actually be able to play really advanced computer games on an iPad and the computing power that's driving the game and the visual engine and everything will be sitting remotely in the cloud and you'll actually be just interacting you know, with, a, with a, essentially a console through 5G, um, a really high-tech advanced game. So you have this globalization happening based on fast internet. It's causing a kind of two magnets in the, in the global economy. One magnet sucks income down towards, call it $100 a day. So if you're in a developing country, it's good news because you're getting more and more money. If you're in a developed country, it's bad news because you're getting less money. Essentially, um, an accountant in Birmingham is in, in competition with an accountant in Bangalore. My wife's using um, Receipt Bank last night, and she's like, how does it do it? How does it, like, is it AI that, like, you know, translates? And I'm like, no, it goes off to India, and they translate it and send it back. And AI does some of it, but it's actually bookkeepers uh, in uh, Bangalore. So it's, you know, it's essentially causing this curve. But there's also a secondary curve, and that is the globally leveraged. So people who are digitally leveraged, they've got digital assets behind them. And uh, I recently spoke on a podcast, actually, with a 22-year-old uh, woman who she's got 130,000 Instagram followers. And I said to her, are you successfully monetizing your following? And she said, yeah, I do about 750K a year. And I said, how, what's, you know, how many people work in your organization? She's like, me and my boyfriend. I said, what other costs or overheads have you got? Oh, we've got some SaaS subscriptions, you know, seven pounds 95 a month for this one and 30 pounds a month for this one. It's like, yeah, right, that's, that's pretty cool for 22, right? So she's digitally leveraged. She's got 130,000 raving fans, and she can turn that into a really exciting business very, very easily, mostly using just her phone as the key technology. The other thing that's happening here is um, deprofessionalization. 
Deprofessionalization is essentially technology allowing very complex tasks to happen uh, with, um, with minimal input. So if you think about uh, this, this example is some nurses looking at some uh, AI generated images that highlight what could be cancer. So a nurse can do the job of an oncologist with this piece of techno technology. You can see that um, in my office, I've got an office junior who interrogates data, sets up hyper-targeted marketing campaigns, um, and manages like niche marketing campaigns on a daily basis. And it's just called boosting a post on Instagram, right? And it's, it's essentially a very complex thing that a marketing professional would have done a few years ago, but, but can be done by an office junior um, pretty easily. So this is deprofessionalization. You guys are facing deprofessionalization in your industry. You can pick up an app on your phone and suddenly you've got, you know, what is fairly advanced software from a few years ago, like 10 years ago, you wouldn't be able to do that yourself. And now you can do it yourself in, in that piece of software. You can choose your personal preference about um, ethics, you can say whether you like companies that have women on boards, you can say if you like companies that are very environmentally conscious, you can create a risk profile. So it's deprofessionalizing a lot of industries.